A simple title for the scripture today, Love. It's funny that as I experience in pastoral ministry, um, we'll see couples together and I'll have people say, you know, I just don't see what they see in each other. And I just say it's one word, love. It's the love that folks have for one another. This past week, I got uh, from Duke Divinity School, which I get several times a year, a fundraising letter. How many of y'all get fundraising letters from your higher institution of learning? I get them a lot. And so the one came this week, and uh, it's, it's a good one. It's, by, it's from Kate Bowler. She is the Associate Professor of American Religious History at Duke Divinity School. She is um, well-read and written. Uh, she has uh, had bouts with cancer and how she has overcome those um, hurdles in her life through her faith, through her friends, through her family, through her community of faith. And she's written a book, and it's titled, The Lives We Actually Have. So we're going to ask the library committee to put this on their list and get a copy here um, for the church. But she begins with about love that touched me so much that I wanted to share it with you today. And it goes like this. Blessed are we, loving beyond our limits, loving when it doesn't make sense, loving without any lifetime guarantees, loving when it might break our hearts. That, of course... The best thing about us, our great, big, dumb hearts. Love. The scripture for today from both the Old Testament and the Gospel are all about love. The Shema of Deuteronomy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And then Jesus' commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, body, soul, and strength. And Love your neighbor as yourself. The Shema. It encapsulates the heart of Jewish monotheism as it specifies directives for generational revitalization of what it means to hear, to repeat the oneness of God, to recite them to your children to keep the faith going from generation to generation to generation. And to recite these words always, love the Lord your God. For centuries, if you go to, for many Jewish homes, you'll see a little, um, it's a glass um, ceramic a piece outside of the front door. It's called a mezuzah. Anybody know about the mezuzah? You'll see those absolutely. And very important part of that. And in the mezuzah inside is printed the words of the Shema that we just had read about. And that scroll, that's um, wound up, put into the mezuzah. And then also are the words of the Shema are there. And so it's there of any size, shape, And it's written on the doorposts. And that is there to remind them that anyone that comes into this home, they are a home that practices to love the Lord your God with all your mind, body, soul, and strength. It also talks about in the scripture we had today about uh, on your wrists or on your foreheads. And so if you'll see some Jewish communities uh, where they'll have the little boxes that are around their foreheads. And that's where the Shema, that's part of the Shema. The Shema is written on their foreheads as instructed in this uh, book of Deuteronomy. But I want us to look for a moment of what it means to say that we love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let's look at heart. What does heart mean with love? It means that the heart is the center of our emotions. It's the place of our spiritual life, our thoughts, our feelings, our motivation, our reasoning, our understanding. Our heart means that we have a desire to have a relationship with God. The soul. The soul in Jewish theology means breath of life. Our inner self, seeking God and having God as the center of our lives. Lo, the Lord our God with our mind, which is our intellect. Obeying God, obeying the commandments, obedience. And then strength. 
Strength is how we show our love of God through our hands and our feet. It's our love of God in our actions to show love to God. And then it's interesting that when Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with all your mind, body, soul, and strength. But then he adds something further. He says, and love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't just say love your neighbor. It says love your neighbor as yourself. Before we can love others, we have to love ourselves. And loving ourselves means remembering that we are a child of God. Each of us is unique in how we look and how we act. But God loves each of us with our imperfections, um, with our brokenness in our lives. God extends God's love to us. Part of that is from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is God's love extended to us. I think about the festival of the Christian home of Mother's Day, and I think of the homes that we live in, the homes that are, have scars and wounds, joys and celebrations, all types of family systems. I see that mainly when I deal with families with weddings and funerals. I've heard conversations where there'll be, you know, we, the couple, the family is determining where to place somebody at a table at the reception. And the conversation goes, well, what do we do with so-and-so? And I heard one of them said, well, put them with Pastor Dave. <laughs> Weddings and funerals. It's where we see the woundedness of our lives where we see the woundedness of interactions in our families. But it's also the joy. I think about it in my own life, uh, living in a, growing up in a troubled household. And above the street from us, up the hill, about a block away, is where my grandparents lived. And so in my formative years, I would spend a lot of time visiting my grandparents. And with my grandmother, she um, played the piano, which I got that gift of seven grandchildren. I was the one to have it. And then she loved to garden, and so I would just watch her garden all the time. She had these massive gardens. And then I think about my grandfather, that I was taking um, organ lessons at the church before I could drive. And I would go up there and I'd say, Granddaddy, can you take me to the church so I can practice? And he'd say, sure. And we'd get in the car, drive downtown. Go in there and he would sit and he would listen to mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. I don't know if he realized they were mistakes or not. But he would just sit there in that room and listen to me play. And then we would drive home after about 40 minutes. And we continued that for two or three years. So it's fortunate that in our family systems... We have persons that nurture us, that love us. And it's because of their love that we are who we are today. Here at Doolin Church, we have Doolin disciples to love one another. We're here for each other, for our hurts, for our pains, for our disappointments, for what I call the hurdles of life. When we get that unexpected medical diagnosis that we're here to love and support one another. I've mentioned to you several times about our friend, disciple uh, Tim, who is in rehab, and Tim is watching us now on his phone. And Tim is having a birthday this week and on Tuesday, and I said I would be back to see him on Tuesday with a birthday card signed by Doolin Disciples. So at the Welcome Center back there, I hope that all of us, as we leave today, uh, will wish uh, Tim a happy birthday, and I'll take that card to him uh, this week. So it's good for us to think about when Jesus had that encounter with the lawyer and told about, love Lord your God with all your mind, body, soul, and strength, and neighbors yourself. The lawyer then asked the question, 
who is my neighbor? And then Jesus told the story of the great Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews who had nothing to do with one another. There was a hurt Jew. He was on the street left to be dead. People passed him by. But here was this Samaritan that you would think would have nothing to do with this Jewish person was the one who lifted him up, put him on his mule, took him home, paid for all of his expenses so that he would be made well. That is who our neighbor is. All the world. We had neighbors of 130 so folks from all over our community uh, who felt love here as they came for a simple bag, grab-and-go bag breakfast and then a gift card to help them along their journey. Those gift cards, I carry them with me in the car. And you know those people that we don't want to, we kind of put our heads down when we see them at the corners and we just kind of look our head down and... I always roll my window down and I say, Here, here's a giant gift card of $10 to help you. And it's from Doolin Church. And we love you. And you can just see the change in that person's eyes. The people around me wondering, oh my gosh, you know, he got stuck giving up to help that person. But they don't see the change that I see in person's eyes that are just given some love, that are given some respect, that are given some dignity. So the world is our neighbor, and we are called to help that in so many ways, as we do here at Doolin Church. The last thing I want to share with you today is it talks about in the scripture about how the Jews put the mezuzah on the outside of their doorpost of their, doorpost of their home to let you know. And I just wonder what we do as Christians to let people know that we're Christians. I've told the story before. I'll tell it again. Uh, Joe Dysart is no longer with us. Joe died a few years ago. But I used a sermon illustration twice one day, uh, a second time. And he came to me after the church service and said, Pastor Dave, I've heard that twice. I don't want to hear it again. But it's the story of I was pastoring a church and went to the cemetery for a funeral and I forgot my Bible. And there was a leader, leadership family lived across the street from the cemetery. And so I knocked on their door and they saw who I was and I said, I have a funeral, I forgot my Bible, can I use yours? And that person's eyes got like this. They didn't know where their Bible was. It was on some bookshelf somewhere with all their other books that when they get time to, they'll take it down and read it. So I hope that each of us will take time today to find that Bible in your home. If you don't have one, go buy one or I'll buy one for you. I'll get the Gideons in here. We'll get you some free Bibles. And put that Bible somewhere that is significant in your house. And then use it. Don't keep it on a bookcase, a bookshelf, like a reference book that you turn to it when you need it. Let it be prominent in your home. The other is, like for Pastor Dave, I hang across at my home at the Parsonage. I have friends uh, come see me and they comment, Pastor Dave, you got enough crosses in here. I've got crosses in every room. But, you know, it's just for those that spend the night that come stay at the parsonage. They know this is a Christian home. For people that eat in the kitchen with Pastor Dave, there's a cross. They know this is a Christian home. For persons that have conversation with me in the living room, they know this is a Christian home. I have a cross on the outside of the, of the uh, parsonage next to the front door. That when people come to solicit, they know it's a Christian home. When I have politicians come to the house, they know it's a Christian home. When I have Girl Scouts come for Girl Scout cookies and they see the cross, they know it's a Christian home. So I think that all of us can, in some way or another, whatever it may be, find some way to let people know that this is a Christian home. And that's the good news, my friends, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we all say together, Amen. Amen.